Hello and welcome to this new episode of CIO Leadership Live in the Middle East. My name is Andrea Benito, editor at CIO Middle East. And it's my pleasure to welcome today Hesam Davis, CIO at Bank Do Care. Hello, Hesam. Thank you so much for being today with us. Uh, hi, Andrea. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, pleasure always mine. It's my pleasure as well. Um, as we were we were discussing before this, that we would like to know more about the digital transformations uh, Bank Do Care is uh, working on, is embracing because um, well, behind this, we just launched a CIO 50 Awards and you were one of the winners for all the work that has been done behind, but uh, like all the work you have been working on, but this information was off the record for the jury members. And I think it was, you know, the right timing to share all the projects you are doing at Bank Do Care, you and your team, because just for the uh, for the audience, Bank Do Care is the third largest bank in Egypt with over 3 million customers, more than 200 branches, more, almost 2,000 uh, ATM, ATMs. Um, I know for a fact that uh, one of the biggest projects in terms of digital transformation, like, like the bank embarking on its digital transformation journey on 2018. So Hisan, could you share some facts and figures about Bank to Care digital transformation process over the recent years and how did, how did these changes help improve your business performance? Excellent. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, I just would like to actually put uh, this conversation a little bit in context about uh, BDC, um, uh, Bank to Care, um, aspiration and uh, its transformation uh, journey that started in 2018. So um, having said that, is that uh, the bank uh, basically um, uh, went through uh, uh, quite a few initiatives. Those initiatives wasn't just only focused on uh, the technology per se, the initiative was uh, transforming the whole bank, including even uh, uh, the structure, the rebranding, uh, the branch design, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so potentially what we uh, been able to do as far as technology is concerned, uh, we actually embark on uh, to really refresh our infrastructure. Uh, the infrastructure refresh, uh, this is basically putting really the foundation, a solid foundation, uh, for our uh, servers, as well as our networks uh, secure it uh, uh, properly. Uh, and on top of that, we start really addressing the uh, business initiatives by adding um, some capabilities that enable the business to achieve their uh, yearly targets, if you like. However, in context, those particular targets are going um, to address um, a very clear and decisive a strategy that uh, Bank Do Care basically would like to achieve. And uh, throughout the four years, we actually addressed uh, quite few areas. Uh, some of these areas, uh, as you rightly mentioned, was actually about uh, leveraging our data, how we can actually make the data really beneficial for the bank. So we have established our data lake uh, platform um, at this particular platform, as we speak at the moment, it's functional. It does provide pretty much near real time kind of uh, dashboards reporting at a different levels of the management that enable us to uh, give the um, uh, give our management um, a good opportunity in order to do the right decisions in the right time. On the other hand, as well, it does actually address where are the sweet spots as far as either products or customer segments um, so that actually has been a successful implementation it took us actually possibly about six to eight months in order to bring it all into tuition um, and that's actually been viewed as a really one of uh, the key enablers for our business which is the business insight how we can manage our business going forward subsequently we started actually addressing how we interact with our customers. So as far as the distribution, uh, which is actually include all the different channels that the bank has, including the branch network. Um, so 
as you rightly mentioned, we used to actually be somewhere around uh, 120 branches. Now we're talking over 220. So this is actually a growth of almost 97%. Uh, we actually addressed as well uh, additional online channels. So we implemented our omni-channel platform. That's including the retail, the corporate, the mobile. Uh, the other thing as well is that we went ahead and we start actually establishing uh, uh, the like of the WhatsApp for business. Uh, so as you can see, more and more, we actually trying to reach out to our customer more conveniently, as well as more proactively. Of course, linking that with the data that we have, so our analytics start actually bringing up the, best, uh, the next best conversation, and potentially we engage with our customer through our channels. And moving forward uh, with that, uh, as you would understand, this is actually as far as our retail customers, as well as corporate customers. Now for the large uh, corporates, which is actually uh, some of our areas that we're really interested in, uh, we managed to actually uh, integrate directly with the ERP of our large corporates who actually do mm -hmm. uh, businesses with us. So this is actually was an advantage. The other thing as well, we went out and we established our uh, online uh, remittance uh, with other international partners uh, uh, with those particular uh, remittance, as you know, um, as far as Egypt uh, is concerned, uh, there is actually a huge amount of funds that actually flows into the country from uh, the people who actually work overseas. So uh, potentially it was a great opportunity. We open these kind of uh, channels to our, uh, uh, to our business partners uh, in multiple areas around the world. And that's actually been proven successful. And that was through an open APIs, uh, uh, through uh, yeah, an open APIs integration. So to that effect, we really start opening more and more kind of channels either at the corporate level or the customer level, uh, uh, or the retail level. So uh, this is actually some areas. Now looking inside the bank, um, which is actually our day-to-day -day operations, although it's fine to actually communicate with the customer. However, how I can actually speed up the delivery of uh, the customer needs, how I can actually deliver uh, faster time to money, uh, uh, faster time uh, to launch my products, et cetera, et cetera, which is really comes to the operational side within the organization. Now, operationally, we addressed some of uh, capability gaps that it was actually in the bank and potentially we start um, we have been successful in actually implementing a complete full-fledged CRM uh, system um, as well as uh, we start actually implementing as well some automation uh, uh, using uh, our normal workflows uh, uh, the workflow engines that we have here within the bank uh, connecting everybody together uh, we have achieved a really a high uh, turnaround time. So um, I would just give a, a very quick example. Uh, the, the application for a loan, um, uh, for example, uh, that actually used to take, let's say, between five to 10 working days. Now the turnaround time could be between two to three days, right? Uh, which is a significant improvement. Obviously, this is actually a high satisfaction to the customer, as well as enable uh, the bank to actually capture the uh, a little bit more uh, market share uh, in this kind of an area again we did actually similar kind of things across multiple operation uh, processes that we actually have here within the bank uh, and this is actually including all different type uh, of products that we are offering here it's either could be uh, the saving and uh, and check accounts it could be credit cards etc cetera, etc cetera. so so as you can see it's actually not uh, a point project. It's actually an overall integrated strategy that's driven by business priority at any given point of time. Um, and the, the good thing about our approach here is that everything that we are putting in place, it's already have a plan for it. So we did not just go out arbitrary and just implementing system. We actually, within IT, we have established our enterprise architecture capability, which is really addressing the roadmap of the technology. And we've been opportunistic or by stealth, we building up step by step those particular capabilities with an eye of what's the end state should look like. 
So it has been quite uh, governed. It has been quite um, uh, quite integrated, understood by the technology. And that enabled us after our three, four years worth of technology investment, now we actually gaining all the benefit out of what we have invested in. So we are now at stage of we continually capitalizing on our previous investment in technology and we can see the real business numbers are growing by high percentage. Kesan, you mentioned so many initiatives. I wanted to focus a little bit on digital banking. We were talking about that on the beginning. And I would like to know if you could explain to us a little bit more about what kind of technologies has Bank Duker been investing in to upgrade banking system and services in recent years. How is the progress of implementing a digital core banking system to accommodate internet banking payment services? and digital payments at Bank Ducker at the moment. Fantastic. Um, so now uh, when we actually, as I mentioned, uh, when we try to talk about uh, the customer engagement channels, so uh, we have actually intro uh, uh, introduced multiple initiatives using different digital technologies in order to address uh, these couple of areas. The very first thing is we managed to implement our fittest digital branch, unmanned branch. Uh, potentially this particular branch, it's actually a walk-in. The customer gets interacted with our uh, 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 CSRs through a video conferencing, and they actually address their needs, all the documentation being actually exchanged uh, by uh, uh, printing out the document, collect customer signature, scanning back in, and potentially at the end of the day, uh, the customer actually can walk out with either their loan has been granted or actually their credit card or debit card gets printed on this front. Mm -hmm. So this is actually one side, uh, uh, one side of uh, uh, the, 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 the story, which is we are really proud of. Uh, we were actually able to uh, uh, put this uh, piece of uh, branch together that actually really showed what BDC can achieve. And it has been uh, it has been really a great success. So this is actually when we talk about the branch now, talking about the physical traditional branches. We uh, still need them. Understand. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, I was saying What's that we still need them. <laughs> That's yeah. So uh, talking about the physical branch, uh, of course, we're trying to uh, convert all the va uh, the low value transactions that normally happens at the branch to a digital channel. So what we have created, we created like, a, like an educational, if you like, digital corner in the branch, where basically our customer service people, they actually help the customer in order to introduce them to the retail internet banking, um, uh, as well as the corporate internet banking that's in the business centers, uh, in order to show them actually the capability and what they can do. And that's actually been received as um, a very um, a very compelling offering to our customers because they don't really need to actually visit our branch so often. So it's a win-win situation. The customer doesn't have to come physically to the branch, as well as from our side of the fence as well, we can focus our efforts of the people in the branch in order to actually uh, direct their effort to the sales, if you like, rather than just only on the low value transaction. So that was actually another success. Um, now, uh, with that, we actually, as well, as I mentioned before, we introduced our Omnichannel. So uh, you would be actually uh, uh, interested to know that all of these channels are all actually being established in one platform. So the platform that we put in it's actually being used across either at the branch level, at the digital branch level, or at uh, uh, the, the online channel. So, uh, so with that, we actually used uh, the, the power of the only channel in order how to uh, really try to manage the customer across, uh, across multiple touch points. Now, the upcoming one, we actually going to plug in our ATM network to actually enable our ATMs to yet become another channel that it's well integrated with 
the online channels. So potentially the customer starts a transaction somewhere and they finish it, uh, uh, they finish it actually in a different channel. So this is really giving the power uh, for the bank in order to reach the customer out at any given point of time through any preferred channel that the customer choose. So this is really as far as uh, the channels is concerned. Hassan, I think that's amazing. And, you know, as we were discussing, um, digital banking is and has been one of the greatest things we have. I think especially we, with, you know, during the pandemic, we realized that even if we are at home, there are a lot of things we can manage. I'm also a believer that we still need brands. We still need, like when we buy a ticket, for example, sometimes there are problems. We need in-person uh, offices where we can solve things. But of course, digital banking was the future, is the present now. It's still, it's something that we need and it's part of our lives. But how do you see the future of digital banking? Uh, the retail banking you mentioned, am I correct? Yeah. Okay. The future of the retail banking, I think, see, the market is changing uh, quite a bit. And um, we are now actually moving uh, to a little bit of uh, a wider mix of retail customer digital servicing. So we're actually talking here about the back in the era of when the banks had to invest in their online channels. Now, what we are seeing is that there is actually a market for uh, a new startups who are actually offering different kind of capabilities for the customers as well, and not necessarily with the banking per se. So what we are actually trying to do at the moment, which is, I believe is actually gonna help us going forward, is basically how we can collaborate with an in-context FinTechs who basically can become yet another area for us, uh, for customer exposure. And uh, uh, potentially we've been successful uh, in actually integrating uh, one of the fintechs who actually have their mobile application for the customers out there. Um, and we are actually uh, uh, sitting in, in the back of this application offering banking services to this app. So it does not really have to be my application in order for the customer to leverage uh, my uh, my banking capability i can actually expose as well my banking capabilities to other fintechs who basically can put the bank into a different context of the value chain for the customer so uh, so that's where we can see uh, where uh, the world is heading on the other hand as well there is a lot of um, some of the um, let's say not necessarily a bank per se, but it could be a financial institution um, who basically uh, can offer certain type of products. So let's assume credit cards or my uh, finance, uh, consumer finance, etc. This is actually open uh, the door for us for a little bit of more collaborative approach where basically we can, uh, uh, we can actually uh, either integrate or collaborate uh, in the overall uh, uh, supply chain for these kind of uh, for these kind of organizations. Now, uh, the other third thing here is that we can see the future of the open banking is actually uh, going really far. I do believe in some other regions uh, uh, within the uh, in some other regions uh, that has been uh, taken uh, quite seriously, and as we can see, uh, mostly in Europe. There is actually the open banking is actually a great thing uh, at mm -hmm. this point of time, and we anticipate that uh, there is actually a little um, uh, a little success that's actually happened here uh, within uh, the Middle East region. However, we are gearing ourselves in order to introduce the open banking within Egypt. However, at this point of time, we actually uh, working hand in hand uh, with our regulators in order to see what how this actually can fit in the overall uh, transformation that's happening within Egypt. So, um, so we are preparing ourselves for that. And again, as I mentioned, most of the investment that we have done, we already have an eye for what are the trends, what's coming up. So it will be a little bit easier for us 
to move faster in this particular space. Now, with that being said, and also it's a little bit sensitive this because in terms of you know cybersecurity, open banking, it's amazing. And I know for a fact Egypt region is in bankings in Egypt are investing on this, but now it's mm -hmm. crucial that there is like like there is like CIOs and CISOs work together, especially on this. Yes, absolutely right. Uh, we never actually turn a blind eye on the security. This is uh, something uh, normally it's actually ahead of us. Uh, we try to address security throughout every step or every initiative that we are taking. And um, I should be actually quite proud uh, of basically the um, saying is that as far as Bangladesh care is concerned, we actually have a great security posture that we have built over the past uh, few years. Uh, so at this point of time, absolutely right. Uh, security is something very, very important. And whatever architecture, whatever implementation that we are doing, security is actually an integral part of this particular uh, uh, this particular implementation right from even the product selection. So uh, definitely we're working hand in hand with that. However, uh, we've been lucky enough that our regulators, uh, the Central Bank of Egypt, have already developed uh, a very solid and comprehensive security framework that potentially addresses uh, most of the high risks area, the high risk areas and the way of treatment, which is something that actually we are delighted to uh, to adapt because it's basically uh, helping us uh, in order to how to introduce our services and products in a really secured manner. So as you can see, uh, it's actually our internal uh, uh, CISO and uh, his organization, as well as in collaboration with uh, the regulators, I think we're coming out with a very good solid security framework that can really not to limit us from really achieving what we want as far as digitization is concerned but on the other hand we do that securely and uh, we keep monitoring actually what are uh, uh, the new things that's happening out there in terms of trends in terms of the different cyber attacks etc and we try to gear ourselves for that uh, Hisan, I also wanted to ask you where Bank to Care is going to invest this year, well, at this point, next year. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the upcoming uh, projects? Yeah, in terms of your upcoming projects, especially in your <clears throat> department. Yeah, that, that's right. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the upcoming uh, year, um, in fact, uh, we actually address our strategy in two year or three year time span. So at the moment, actually, we have quite few in-flight projects that addresses uh, areas such as uh, the credit, uh, the credit risk, uh, some areas addressing the security, some areas actually addressing uh, some internal capabilities, especially around the automation uh, of our operations in the back end. That will remain our focus at the moment. Um, as I mentioned before, is that we always try to, yes, it's it's all well and good to reach out to the customer, but we really have to be agile in order to deliver our services to the customer. So we're always now addressing how we can, first of all, re-engineer our internal processes. The other thing here is where we can automate and we try to reduce the turnaround time as much as we can. So this is this is actually one of uh, uh, the key in it, uh, the key focus points uh, going forward uh, for the next year investment. The other area as well is actually focusing on a little bit more digitizing our products and services. So uh, so as we can see, we haven't really reached. Um, uh, pretty much 100% um, uh, digitization per se, uh, but we actually in a solid steps in order to add more and more services and offering more and more products into, uh, into our digital channels. The third focus point is basically going to be about how we can start leveraging the data uh, that the bank has and uh, as 
to the benefit of the bank and the benefit of our customers. So potentially, we're going to start our initiative for the next year to start actually implementing an artificial intelligence. Uh, this is actually something that we have done a um, few proof of concepts into different areas um, and it's proven successful. So now we we'll start to cast these kind of capabilities to actually becomes as an embedded part of our operating model. Um, so as you know, uh, or there is actually quite a few institutions that they've been uh, ahead in this particular space. But in general, all in all, I think it's still a, uh, a fairly a fairly new uh, thing in the market. And we just try to actually catch up and uh, becoming potentially one of the leaders in this particular space. So we are serious about our data local details. Well, next time we catch up, I hope uh, I, we can hear more about uh, these projects. Hesam, thank you so much for your time, for the amazing work. Congratulations to you and your team at Bank du Care. Excellent. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And uh, it was my pleasure to meet you today. Um, and uh, I'm always available. Uh, please just uh, uh, let me know um, if there is actually anything that I can help with. I will be more than happy. Thank you.